Well, that is a very tricky question, who's my favorite composer, and I won't give you the standard answer to that, which is the, my favorite composer is the one I'm going to perform next. That's not the answer you're going to get from me. <laughs> because, <laughs> indeed, you know, the more music you know from the inside, uh, the more you realize why certain pieces of music function, they work, uh, they have an effect on the listeners and on the performers, and you realize why others perhaps work, function to a lesser extent. And um, if you say, for instance, um, Beethoven was the greatest symphonist ever, then the question would be, what about Brahms? <laughs> what about Mahler? What about Schubert's Unfinished Symphony? <laughs> what about the Symphony from the New World by Dvorak, for instance, but to name but a few? So you see this sort of uh, ranking uh, leads to a lot of limiting, and therefore I'd really like to leave that question as I have answered it. Well, uh, if a piece of music is really unfamiliar, i.e. it's rarely performed or it has never been recorded, or it is in fact a first performance, then the process of uh, getting to know it is obviously much more complicated than when you deal with a familiar piece of the standard repertoire, to say. Because what you do with an unfamiliar piece of music, you read the score, and you have to then form a sound picture in your head, uh, which comes possibly near to what you actually then hear from the orchestra in the first rehearsal. Of course, uh, some, say, intricate uh, harmonic passages, you can also reduce and play them on the piano, but it still remains rather a, um, a complicated and long process to get really into a piece of music that has never been performed or that you have never heard. It's always uh, uh, useful to know about the historical background uh, in which uh, a particular piece of music falls, you know. And um, if it is a contemporary piece, of course, uh, you have then the advantage of actually perhaps meeting the composer and discuss certain points with, points with him. I think uh, the relationship has developed in a very steady way over the years. We have done a lot of touring together, both in the UK and on the continent. And um, touring brings me actually to the second uh, part of your question, because touring is always a bit of a, of a touchstone for the uh, team of orchestra and conductor. And what I appreciate really highly about the uh, RPO is the fact that they all have this, that um, highest degree of a professionalism, i.e. when uh, the odd problem uh, occurs on a tour, a technical problem, a plane being delayed or what do I know, they really are capable to cope with this problem without losing their nerves. That is very important. And the other part of their professionalism is, of course, their quickness in rehearsal, their flexibility, uh, and the fact that they have a very positive attitude to the jobs they are doing. The sound that you uh, go for of, is, of course, the sound that you imagine for a specific composer. This is the right sound you have. You have uh, sort of you build up an ideal of of, of the sound that you want to have. And um, obviously, uh, when an orchestra like the RPO plays as much repertoire, covers as much repertoire as they do. Uh, you sometimes, in rehearsal, have to say, no, this is the wrong sound for this particular piece of music, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed, for instance, we did yesterday, um, we did Mozart clarinet concerto with a reduced uh, um, uh, number of players, yeah. obviously, you know? And um, you get immediately uh, the feeling that the players, because they know that it's not their normal situation, they do adjust. They do adjust in a very clever way. You can still give them then the odd hint what you want, you know, but uh, it is what I said earlier on, it's that sort of flexibility also that uh, responds to what's needed. That is obviously my job to remind them, yes. but I sincerely hope it is also recognized as a, nece as a necessity from the other side, yes. you know, that they 
adjust yes. to me in, in a sense of knowing what sort of sound of what the sort of quality I really want. Trying to combine a bit the elements of both extremes. You know, because what is authority actually? What is the authority of a conductor? A conductor's authority has to really prove itself again and again in a rehearsal and in concert. It's nothing that, you know, you assume automatically. You have to prove it the whole time. And um, on the other hand, you have to obviously, over the years, um, you have to build up that uh, special confidence towards the orchestra and you can expect it from the orchestra. And um, that leads me to the second part of your uh, question, the more uh, collegiate uh, approach, you know. You have, uh, in the best case, in certain moments of a concert, you have, from the conductor's point of view, you have to give that feel, you have, you have to transmit that feeling of freedom, you know, to the orchestra. Um, and these are, in my experience, the moments where musical magic really can work. I do believe it is important, but I don't think it's so much a matter of, uh, it has not, not so much to do with the secrets. You have to ask yourself clear questions. Whom do you want to reach? I, the age group has to be defined, for instance. And then, secondly, you have to try, I believe, uh, to find a new and possibly original formula, concert formula, to, to present to a new audience. For instance, with my own orchestra, the Westdeutsche Sinfonia, um, I uh, found a formula which we called uh, Classic Sonntag, which means uh, Classic Sunday. And what we do is we start at 11 o'clock with a two-hour matinee, introducing the evening's uh, program. We talk about the works, uh, we have multimedia, and last but not least, uh, we have a lot of live music and members of the orchestra play chamber music related to the composers of, of the evening's program, with me as a piano. Then there is a lunch break for the public, then there is an open rehearsal, and then at six o'clock, Sunday afternoon, there is a concert. And that has worked very well indeed. And yes. uh, I think part of the success uh, lies in the fact that uh, the conductor himself takes the public through that whole Sunday full of music, and the public sees me in different roles as a presenter, at the piano, rehearsing, and in concert finally, you know. Yeah. And I think that it gives the whole thing uh, a feeling of unity and also authenticity. I think informed uh, is just the right word. It informs uh, you to, to a, a really um, uh, huge extent, I would say, because um, it takes as an example uh, the symphonic uh, work of Brahms, mm -hmm. the four symphonies, standard repertoire. You know, um, uh, these symphonies are, one can say, to a large extent, in, uh, they are enlarged chamber music. You know, and it's not that uh, symphonic uh, concept, say, of, of Mahler later on, or of Bruckner, for instance. They're very basic differences between the, these composers. And, uh, you know, I played most of the uh, Brahms chamber music uh, for strings and piano, and I played most of his solo piano work. Uh, and you really uh, get quite a different outlook on the symphonic output of Brahms when you have that, uh, you know, uh, when you bring that with you. The challenge is really to find something in these works which, in spite of, as you say, the fact that they are played again and again all over the world, to find uh, the odd aspect which has perhaps not seen to such, to such an extent and in such uh, clarity. And we must not forget that, let's take as an example Beethoven, uh, the picture of Beethoven as a composer changes ever so often as well. It's not the Beethoven that we know from, say, uh, Furchtwängler's days, you know. It, it has changed. There was the, um, the non-romantic Beethoven afterwards, you know, after the war, for instance, we, we, we lived with quite a uh, different picture of Beethoven, the symphonist. And um, 
I think it is changing again uh, in these days a bit. I think we are getting uh, away a bit from that sort of uh, approach uh, which had a lot to do with um, uh, let's play it cool, you know, and let's let's be sober about it, you know. And uh, I think, and, and that uh, I find is a very good development, actually. You know, we can uh, again uh, go into this well-known music uh, with a um, uh, with a new concept, or let's say uh, we can see and discover and uh, bring out details which in the process of history, perhaps have not been seen as clearly as that. And, and the great works of music, the great works of art in general, um, they um, have this potential in themselves to do so. To be able to communicate together with an orchestra uh, this incredible richesse of great music. And I think we should also add to this, this is an enormous privilege for all of us. Yes.